Welcome to January and another episode of the Murder Mentality. Uh, got rid of my mustache this morning. I just couldn't take the itchiness. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, let's talk, guys. I've been talking a lot about like our mental state lately and like where we're at like emotionally from moment to moment and how we let that affect what we're doing and how we're doing it in, the, in our day. Um, what's up, Stanley? Um, and here is something that I was thinking about today. Like, first of all, we do need to be very in tune with where our internal state is, you know, what like rate of vibration we're at, how we're looking at the world from moment to moment, very important things. But, um, you know, something that's been heavy on my mind a lot lately is like, I see like a lot of talk about like mental health. I see like a lot of talk about people, you know, sometimes you just need a day off from the stress of life. I see a lot of people talking about like, Hey, I just want to be happy. And I think we're going to need some perspective on this one. And let me get this straight. First of all, I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a counselor. Um, but I'm somebody who's been through a lot of things. And one of the things that I've learned personally as I've developed more and more as a person, as my character has gotten stronger, as I've realized more and more of who I am and how strong I am, the, the things that I don't want to deal with and the things that I don't feel like doing are actually the things I should be doing. Um, and that's a harsh reality of life in general. We've, we've reached a point in our society where we're so comfortable that we're taking everything for fucking granted. And I think this has happened before. I think if we look at world history, you see this happen over and over and over again. A culture will get, you know, like will, will like rise. It will, you know, start dominating its area. And then it'll start, you know, worrying about new technologies. And before you know it, convenience and comfortability become very, very high on the list of things to worry about. Now, you know, uh, the thing is, is that with technology, we've managed to like half that amount of time that it's taken to have that happen, you know, manifest destiny across the United States and all that other stuff. Um, but here, like, let's, let's really examine something, guys. There's this idea floating around, around with people that eventually, you know, if you're just relaxed enough and if you... If you play your cards right enough to just be chill and not have to deal with stuff, that you'll be able to find peace of mind. But that's not real. Like, I want us to take an objective look at reality. Have you ever had a whole year where something didn't come along and kick your ass financially, spiritually, physically, financially, in some way, shape, or form? Just... Honestly, answer that question. Have you ever had a full year where that's happened? And as I get older, I start to realize a year ain't shit, okay? And I used to think a year meant a lot, you know? So I know that in reality, the likelihood that I'm ever going to be able to go extended periods of time without life kicking my ass in some way, shape, or form is zero. So let's look at this from, like, again, an empirical, a, a top-down view. Is it more reasonable to understand that we should learn to be tougher? We should learn to get strong and face the things that make us uncomfortable, to learn to set boundaries, to learn how to push forward through things that we don't feel like doing because we know it's what we need to do? Or is it more reasonable that we should just take a step back, you know, not worry about it so much, you know, just try to chill? You know, relax, just do me, you know, just let everybody do me. Um, what of those two things is going to be prepared for when shit hits the fan? And I'm not trying to hurt people's feelings, but I think sometimes people need to get stirred up a little bit. Um, I think mental health is important. But I also think that the way we're approaching mental health right now is some fucking victim ass mindset stuff. Really, I feel that our incessant need to be able to consistently address people's internal states, let's adjust the outside world 
Let's do less and expect more for other people to understand where we're at, which is never going to happen and never has through the fucking course of human history. And events won't wait for you to feel good for you to deal with them. In fact, if you wait to feel good to deal with the shit you need to do, you'll notice, as I have in the past, that shit piles up quick. Okay? There's always something to be doing. There's always a new thing that's going to come up. And it's better, I love this quote, it's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. And make no mistake, our lives are a, in a state of warfare. We're, we're fighting to stay alive. I mean, not like we used to, but we're fighting to stay spiritually alive as well. We're fighting to stay just present. We're in a consistent battle, for lack of a better term, to keep our, our mental states where they need to be. Okay? But when we expect the world to just understand that I just need a day off, does it understand that? Does the phrase, I just want to be happy, make sense? And I understand that depression can be a chemical imbalance. But I also understand that we need to look at it from more than just like, I need to take a pill to feel better. And, and here's why, okay? If I have diabetes, and the only thing I fucking do to manage my diabetes is take insulin and check my blood levels, and I don't adjust how I eat, I don't start making sure that I'm getting regular exercise and caring for my health in other ways, am I really fucking caring for myself? If you have crippling depression and you're unwilling to force yourself to do some things that you know will benefit you, depression, in my opinion, is a disease of self-sabotage. And that's the worst part about it. Because you're sabotaging yourself, you convince yourself that it's okay not to put effort into stuff. You convince yourself that it's okay to just stay in bed today. Because I just want to. I just don't feel like getting up and doing stuff. The problem is, is that your life is too fucking cushy. And you can afford to do that. We've reached a point in time in human history where you can fucking live your whole life with never actually, actually having to struggle to really, really fucking stay alive. If you ever look at pictures of people in the 18 fucking hundreds, they're all fucking rail thin. You know why? Because they were starving. I'm not saying that that's what we should be doing, but I'm saying that we need to recognize that at no point in time in human history has it ever been easier to live. And weirdly enough, no time in human history, in my opinion, have we ever seen people be less grateful to be alive. Have you ever met somebody from a third world country that moves here? Them motherfuckers are happy as fuck. All right? Girl came in here yesterday to get tattooed. She's from Kuwait. If you don't know where Kuwait is, it's a tiny little country attached to Iraq. All right? I think it's northern Iraq. But if you don't know me, I've got four sisters that are all half Iraqi. Okay? And here's the thing. I've met a lot of people that are like transplants from other countries. Okay? And their first generation, they're still, they're, they're hardworking, man. The people that are born... First, after the original immigrants, they're hardworking. But what's crazy is that each generation consistently gets more and more like the rest of us because you can't get raised around us without being like us, right? Okay. But that first generation, and this girl was so fucking pumped on life, man. Because in her country, they'll fucking kill you for fucking getting piercings. They'll carry, kill you for fucking getting tattooed like me. All right? I need you to comprehend how easy you have it. Stop telling yourself this lie that you're just weak and you just need a little bit more time to get stronger. Fuck that. That's not you. You're not a weakling. God don't make weaklings. That's the enemy telling you that you're not worth it. That's the enemy telling you that you're too fucking weak to get out of bed. That's the enemy trying to convince you that you are not a fucking warrior poet born on this world 
to fucking bring it to a better place than it was the way you found it. I simply don't believe that you're weak. And a lot of people say that the things I'm saying and the way I say them are harsh because I just don't understand mental illness. You're not fucking weak. You just feel weak. Have you ever noticed that when you have to do something, no matter what, it just has to get done, that no matter how tired you are, you still get it fucking done? What if your whole life is like that? What if in reality, these dreams that you're letting fucking die all the time because you're too tired are non-negotiable concepts being downloaded into your soul from God? Maybe that's why it feels so shitty not to live your dream. Maybe that's why it feels so shitty for you to be at a job you fucking hate instead of chasing what makes you happy. We are living in 2022. People don't realize it, but we are living right through a fucking renaissance period right now. We are watching the entirety of the way fucking money, capitalism, the flow of information, the flow of power, the structures of power shift in a fucking remarkable fashion. And we are living through history as we speak. The new gold rush is the mind. The new gold rush is the mind. It's intellectual property. It's intellectual thinking. It's the ability to think your way into situations using the tools at hand which are fucking limitless and, and make anything you can ever want to happen, happen. Never before in history has there been more people, more people that are getting out of poverty and digging themselves out of the situations they were born to. Never before in history have we had more people changing their financial situation and their fucking mental situation. We have literally a historical period we're living through. It's When you lived in ancient Egypt, if you were a fucking peasant, there was no option. You were poor, the fucking bottom class, rest of your life, fuck you. That's how that worked. It's 2022. People are dragging themselves up out of the fucking mire and muck with this thing that you're watching me on. And people are just too sad to get out of bed. I'm just not happy enough to do the things that I know I need to do. Do you know that you'll feel more fucking happy and more fulfilled when you do shit you don't want to fucking do all day long? And I don't want to just talk about doing a job that you hate fucking doing, but I'm talking about getting up and doing the things that you know matter to you, but you don't feel like doing. Getting up and taking care of your health. Do you know that you feel like a fucking full savage when you consistently address your internal state by doing hard stuff? Do you know that you consistently grow and you understand what a bad motherfucker you are and how badass God made you? What an incredible warrior you are when you go to war and you do it. You know what the crazy thing is? Is the best warriors throughout history didn't want to die. I mean, like, not really. Nobody wants to die, but they also had massive respect for people who died valiantly. That's worth noting. Nobody wants to die. Talk to Jocko Willink. I mean, you don't talk to him. Take his content. Watch his, watch his YouTube videos. He has a whole one about war that's mind-blowingly good. Extreme ownership, okay? <laughs> He talks about how, in some of his talks about how like literally combat, leading men into battle and combat was the best experience of his life because it was like having stage four cancer. It was terminal, potentially deadly. He watched people die and give their lives valiantly fighting the whole time. I have goosebumps again on my whole body because that's what fucking matters. Because until you realize how fleeting all this is, You'll continue to take it for granted. Your life is but a breath of air. It's the length of your hand. There's been 2,000 plus fucking generations of human beings that came before you. For you to be here and then tell me, I just want to be happy. And until I can be happy all the time, I'm not going to feel motivated. How dare you spit? How dare you spit on the blood, sweat, tears, and life that they sacrificed for you to fucking sit on this mound of bones? with all of your convenience and say, it's not good enough for me. How dare you? <laughs> and I say these words out of love because I do truly love every one of you. And I know that some of you just need to hear something that's harsh. 
I know that I needed to hear some things that were harsh because it changed my life once I did, once I internalized them. And here's, here's the harsh reality. Nobody's coming to save you. Nobody's coming to save you. You are the hero of your own story. Or you're that pacified person that watches the disaster happen and helps nobody, including themselves. Or you're the person who becomes a supervillain because you're too convinced that it should just work out how you want it to instead of putting the work in to be grateful for what you have and make something better for yourself and everyone else. That's real superhero shit. Be the superhero of your own story. Quit telling yourself lies like, I just want to be happy all the time. That's not how it works. You can't even have joy all the time. I've heard people be like, well, joy is a choice. You know, and happiness is a experience or an emotion. Yeah, you can't have those all the time either. You literally cannot have joy 24-7. You cannot have happiness 24-7. The fucking end. The end. It's not how it works. Everything in life exists on a spectrum. Up, down, side to side. There is no such thing as happy all the time. And until you admit that and recognize that what you can have is peace of mind because you are being who you know you need to fucking be, you will never have the things you want. Peace of mind is what keeps you acting right when you feel down here. Peace of mind is what keeps you acting right and continuing to move forward even though you feel amazing and you're feeling so amazing you don't feel like you need to keep working like that. Peace of mind and focus Keep you focused on God, your creator, the master blacksmith of creation who is forming you into a beautiful tool through your experiences instead of the experience of being struck with that hammer and formed into that tool. And Stanley, fucking amazing, bro. I love you big time, homie. All right? <laughs> love you all. I'm also excited to mention too, though, that I have started clearing my schedule starting in February, gave myself a little gift of giving myself time to work on my other projects. So I'm going to be stepping that coaching shit right back up. Um, I'm going to be able to give actual serious time to that stuff. And I'm super excited about that. Um, I've had some old people reach out to me and I'm really, really excited to be reinvolved in that stuff. You know, it's just a, uh, just like you guys, man, <laughs> like success and happiness is a, is a, a spectrum. There's not just like a, a benchmark for it. And I'm learning alongside you guys. But I want to be vulnerable enough to learn with you and from you and teach you and all of those things at once and have us create a group of like-minded people together that will absolutely crush at just being authentic. I love you guys. Now be authentic. Be real. If you don't feel good, that's okay. It ain't okay to stay there. If you don't feel like it, it's okay not to feel like it. It's not okay not to do it because you don't feel like it. So let's get that shit the fuck out of our heads. And let's move forward, guys. Love y'all.